Kelly Slater saying he saved their lives. And, you know, I'm reading these stories thinking, all I know is if you're going to get in trouble in Monster Surf, who better to have around than Kelly Slater? I mean, talk about having the right person in the right place at the right time. This is Okudaska of We Are Change.org here on Oahu, Hawaii, and I'm joined by a man who needs no introduction, Kelly Slater. Many people know this man as uh, obviously a pro surfer, but when you really get to know Kelly, you find out a lot of interesting, deep things that many people don't talk about in society. We've got into everything from spirituality to politics, uh, but a lot of the core issues that we're bringing up, especially since we're here in Hawaii, I really wanted to get your perspective on Monsanto. There's been a lot of back and forth inside of Hawaii with this major corporation, with this major institution that's infused with our government. What is your take on Monsanto and what's happening here in Hawaii with GMOs? Well, there's also like Dow and Syngenta, and there's a whole bunch of groups but yeah there's a there's a lot of farmland here owned or probably leased or rented by Monsanto and and the like and uh, you know we've from what I hear from the people who my friends here who do the real work on the ground it's like ground zero here for um, you know testing all the new GMO seeds and plants and whatever and um, you know this is I guess the way I kind of saw it when they brought that up to me, I, my first thought was, you're in an enclosed environment, you're on these islands, you're in the middle of the ocean, so if things went, I mean, zombie haywire, not that I think that necessarily that's going to happen, but in a doomsday kind of thought, well, at least they're just stuck here yeah. on these islands. But, you know, do you want that in your backyard? Are you the, do you want to have that where you live? And I think most people say no. I think the problem is that you get a lot of people in the community who get jobs through that, and um, you know, they may be against it uh, morally, but then when, you know, you have to pay rent and feed your kids and all that kind of thing, it, it, you're, you're starting to pit people against themselves and uh, it becomes pretty tricky. So, um, you know, it's unfortunate, but I, you know, as you and I were talking about before with uh, people just waking up on their own with your, uh, your own moral obligation to yourself, your own conscience, um, you know, the idea is to try and do best for you what you can do, and hopefully that spreads to other people. You know, I, I do get a lot of friends who call me, unfortunately because their wife or they get cancer, and um, like, what do we do now? We want to change everything, you know? We, I mean, uh, they know that I'm interested in those kind of things, and they, you know, I have a lot of friends who kind of laugh at me about how yeah. into like health food I am and, and organics and that kind of thing, but then, when they get sick or their kids are sick or something, you know, I get a phone call and I think that's cool because yeah. then they feel like they can trust something I might have read or, you know, something I might have utilized myself. Yeah, and that's why it's important to keep yourself educated, keep yourself in the loop of exactly what's happening because it's extremely dangerous. I mean, obviously, yes, Hawaii is isolated, but that's why they're doing the secret testing and anything could happen. I mean, we're hearing news reports of the GMO mosquitoes coming out of Brazil and we're seeing the Zika virus just spread all over there. You know, yeah, yeah. So, so there's so much different news and information coming out. If you don't pay attention to it, you will be hurt later down the line like we're seeing you know the number of people with cancer is just dramatically increasing but you know switching topics a little bit I'm also interested in what you think of the greater you know kind of political scene and and do you even have a hat in the race in the 2016 elections um, no at this point I don't you know um, I've identified a lot over the years with like Ron Paul and um, Ralph Nader and and, and you, these could be people from totally different parties but uh, you know I think when, when people speak truth and they, they, they throw things right in the face of what is popular and, and it's the truth, I think those are people you can trust. Um, and you know, you seem to be one of those people who are out there constantly looking for that and trying to educate people and show people that, that direction or that answer, which I appreciate. That's why I started following you, reading your, some of your stuff, kind of happen upon your stuff online. That's obviously how we came in contact. Yeah. Um, no, but at this point, I don't have a person in the race. You know, I, uh, you know, once upon a time, I like uh, Cynthia McKinney, who yeah. she was voted against the war in Iraq. She said, "No, we we got to calm our heads here, and we need to really think this out logically and rationally." But I, uh, but you know, she was the one person who was very vocally against the wars and said, "Look, we don't have all the proof. We don't know what happened. 9/11 was a freaky situation. We don't have all the facts behind that yet. We don't know why we're going to Afghanistan or Iraq." I mean, these are all. Uh, you know, when you look at all these things that are happening around the world with uh, ISIS or, you know, what we call terrorism here and there, you know, 
obviously there are people doing terrible, horrible, outrageous things around the world. Um, a lot of it is perspective, where you're from. Did you lose family members in a war that had nothing to do with you yeah. for no reason? Did your kids go to war, get sent for, without being asked, you know, and have to go fight something that they don't even know what they're fighting for? The whole thing is so confusing. I just, I just think at the end of the day, we as people need to take care of ourselves and our family and put out good, positive things. Um, you know, listen to your gut. And uh, when things don't make sense, there's something hidden. And um, I think there's a lot of that. There's more and more of that going on, and it's more and more covert as we evolve. Yeah, there's a lot of divide and conquer. There's a lot of we have to choose the lesser of two evils, but not many people see that, you know, picking the lesser of two evils is still evil. Yeah. Um, what Ralph do you think Nader said that when they when they told Nader that he affected the elections and took it away from away from Gore, and he said, well, you know, you're chicken, picking between bad and worse. I don't care who wins. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. uh, he goes, actually, they. He goes, I think uh, Al Gore cost me the election. <laughs> I thought that was a great quote. <laughs> it is, and, and exactly, it's being ostracized by the people who are in power, and they're keeping away the real information, and people like Cynthia McKinney who are being pushed out of office by the Republicans and Democrats together going against them. You see this kind of, like, mafia pushing away any kind of real truth, any kind of real kind of affirmations, and keeping us away from real knowledge and things that we know in our gut are inherently wrong. Um, Let me just tell my friend. Trav, you can walk over that way. Yeah. You can go out through the, or you can walk behind us. This is, yeah, it doesn't matter. It's all cool. We're in, we're in Hawaii. <laughs> we can do, you can do what you want. It's a, it's a free place. That's what I love about this, this place here. It, it's, it's kind of very easy going, but also uh, it does have a lot of its issues. It does have a lot yeah. of its problems. Um, to me... Hawaii still, you know, Hawaii has that hometown feel you know and everyone knows everybody and there's not some mystery thing coming out of nowhere Every, everyone kind of you know you got to live around these people when it's a small place and so you need to treat people right and I think it's, it has a great sense of community here no it definitely does and that's extremely important um, especially with some of the things you were getting into before when you said listen to your gut and, and always look mm -hmm. at a deeper question how have you kind of gotten to this point that you're at right now because you know we so we slowly see an awakening within the population, seeing a lot of the problems, doing something about the problems, but how did you get to where you are right now, being able to see the problems and also uh, understand them in such a way that you do now? I started basically getting away from mainstream media and started reading alternative media at some point about, you know, probably right after 9-11. Um, you know, I, like anyone else, would just sort of heard the official story that we were told in mainstream media and kind of believed that. And, I, and then, I don't know, there's a lot of things that are just fishy about the whole thing to me. There's so many questions. There's never been an independent investigation um, officially launched, um, you know, to, to answer all the tough questions. And a lot of those tough questions are from family member, families who lost family members. Yeah. And I think those are the most important people to, to listen to. I, I personally didn't lose any friends or family members. Um, I lost friends of friends, but um, you know I wasn't directly affected in, in that way. But our future was affected. We've went, we've been in multiple wars since then. We've alienated or uh, you know villainized millions of people around the world since then over things we're as normal citizens aren't very aware of what the reasoning are. Like you know, it, it's sort of that Vietnam thing again. These guys, you know, my godfather went over and fought in Vietnam. He flew helicopters in Vietnam, and anyways, I've talked to a lot of people about that, and there's a lot of guys going over there not knowing what they're fighting against. You see what um, Muhammad Ali went through when he said, I'm not going to go fight these people. I, they didn't do anything to me. And, um, you know, that's kind of how I feel, you know, and if, if somebody were to come into my house and do something, you know, try to steal or hurt someone, I, of course I'm going to fight. But, you know, until that day, I'm not going to go and mess with the, the hornet's nest and cause a problem and I, I and unfortunately I sort of feel like metaphorically that's what we have done uh, in America you know I love this country I love the life I've been given I love the opportunities I've had I think it's the best place in the world um, at the same time I think that we sometimes cause problems that we don't necessarily need to either handle they're not really ours or 
that we could, you know, steer clear of. Yeah. Well, if you truly love your country, if you truly are a patriot, you're going to try to make your country the best it could be. Yeah. And that means checking authority, that means questioning authority, that means, you know, being able questioning to... Questioning yourself. Yes. Questioning yourself a lot. I mean, for me in, in my profession, in surfing, I've been my harshest critic. And that's, I think, what's allowed me, helped me to become my best or, you know, as, as close to being my best I could. I mean, being harsh on what I do and looking back at myself, you know, and um, unfortunately I think that has, uh, on, on a personal level, I've probably been hard on some people close to me in my life because that's my approach towards myself. But um, uh, yeah, I, I think that we need to really always second guess everything we, not second guess, but always question our reasons behind why we do things and the intent behind it and the, the result we're going for. And um, I, I don't know, I mean, you're taught as a kid not to beat people up to, to, uh, to teach them a lesson. You know, you got to talk through it. And diplomacy has somehow vanished uh, on, the, on the international political scale. Um, people would rather villainize someone than to go and understand them and talk to them. And I travel around this world, man. I know a lot of people from a lot of different religions, a lot of different cultures, a lot of different races of people. And there's, there's great people in every place I go. And there's also people who have been through a lot of hardships that are misunderstood yeah. and um, need someone to listen to them, not, not to uh, be attacked anymore. So um, I don't know. And, and people are the same wherever you go. You know, people are all dealing with the same similar kind of struggles and um, you know ultimately you go back in history to some point we all came from either the same community or same person or yeah. you know we all are related somehow so yeah I'm very happy you brought up the introspection, the you know the stuff that you said about yourself, because that's also really key. Listening to your gut, but also looking and examining yourself and being critical of yourself. Because if you don't do that, you know you're no better off than someone else denying the truth to you know the world. You have to be very honest with yourself, and a lot of times that's not easy. But once you finally are honest, you know life is a lot better. Life, you're able to correct a lot of the mistakes and not hurt the people in your life after you're able to face that bad truth that you you know once kind of did. You know, same with with me. You know, going through a journey. Of like insecurities and a lot of ego and a lot of pride it took a lot of just hard like self-realization hard truths to kind of realize crap I've been wrong a lot of times in this mm -hmm. you know life and it's very you know and, and you know if we're expecting governments if we're expecting corporations to do so we kind of have to do so yeah. as well and I've, I've found a lot of times in my life when I have felt most strongly about something most angry, most whatever, that usually it's because I'm probably, not probably, usually it's been, be, I've, I've found that it's because I'm wrong about something, but I think I'm right. And so I'm trying to cover it up and don't realize it. Yep. And um, so those have been freeing moments for me when I feel like I've discovered that, or I, or I know I have, and I realize, oh man, shoot, I gotta go apologize for how I acted, yeah. you know? <laughs> and, it's, and it's not an easy thing yeah. to do, yeah. but you know, with, with enough practice, yeah. uh, no one's perfect, but at least you'll be more, you know, yeah. a lot better than some butthole who doesn't give a damn, yeah, or you, know, you'll be a lot better off than Monsanto. <laughs> when, you, when you apologize, you, it humbles you, and you also, um, you open yourself up to the vulnerability and all that, but you also open yourself up to, to knowing someone or something better. Yeah. And um, I think that we don't realize that we, we're trying to avoid that because of our insecurities yeah. a lot of times. Yeah. So is it safe to say, screw Monsanto, investigate 9-11, and vote for nobody? Those are pretty solid. Uh, <laughs> that's a pretty solid uh, platform to start with. I would say that's a good, good starting point. Kelly, thank you so much for everything. Is there anything else you want to say? Anything else you want to share? Anything else you're doing? You're in the news right now. He's in the news right now for saving a toddler and, and, and a mother. He's a very humble guy. Uh, anything else you want to get out there to the world and, and anything else that you're doing? No, you know what? I, just to give you that story, because I didn't really talk about it in the media, but we watched this big wave swamp. This woman who was a, a friend, sort of a friend of mine's wife, and I didn't realize it. She was running her baby carriage with headphones on. She didn't see the wave. She got swamped. Me and a buddy and about three lifeguards ran over and sort of helped pull them up out of this. They got washed across the road, yeah. through the woods, against the fence. To be honest, they were going to be, if I wasn't there, if nobody was there, they, I, I'm sure they would have been totally fine, but it was the shock and the potential problem that could have happened. But yeah, yeah anyways, look, keep your eyes open in your community. You never know when something radical is going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, not, not really much of a message. I, have, I haven't been very vocal about much stuff lately. I've, 
I spent a lot of time reading and researching on my own, and, and um, I've been uh, I've been in some interesting debates recently online with some people about things, but uh, no, I haven't been sort of spreading much message. More sitting back and observing a lot lately. Well, now you definitely are. Thank you so much for right. opening up to us, Thanks, bringing us to your house. You're yeah, awesome and incredible, you. and uh, man, really appreciate it. Thank yeah. you so much. What you do if you're the king of an empire and you rely on the slavery of your people to keep you rich and powerful. But you see your people waking up and starting to show dissent. What would you do if you wanted to stay in power? You would sure hope that they forget about it. You would want to destroy